Howdy folks, Luke Simons with you, back to the Basics 101. Today is going to be a different video uh, than what you're all used to. I'm not breaking anything, I'm not fixing anything, uh, we're not ranching. It's a serious, serious challenge. And I challenge you to watch this video and prayerfully consider what I'm saying. Prayerfully consider it. Uh, there's never been a time more so than Christians need to be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope for our country. As Christians, we need to stand up and stand out. We are called, it is our duty, we are duty bound to stand up for godliness. I would challenge you to watch this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you, uh, after watching this video, if you think to yourself, you know, what would I need to do to get involved in my government, my school boards, my, my city council, my county commissions, etc.? Let me know. I'd be happy to help you. I'd be very happy to help you. Folks, I'll just say it right now. May the Lord guide and keep you. And happy trails. Howdy folks, Luke Simons with you, District 36 House of Representatives in your friendly state of North Dakota. You know, <clears throat> until we get serious about Christian values, about American values, our country is for naught. The church needs to stand up. It needs to stand up and stand out. Right now, we have a group of activists coming across this country as a whole that are not afraid to put their time, their effort, they live and breathe this stuff. And the church is quiet. It's quiet. When Patrick Henry said, for I know not what other court, what." others might take but as for me give me liberty or give me death now I'm paraphrase that a little bit but his speech was actually a little bit more defined you were talking about a Puritan Quaker Puritan Quakers don't believe in war much less even defending their family most of them but he got to a spot where he knew he couldn't stand by idle slavery slavery in our country at one time, the Supreme Court stood up to slavery. They stood up. They, they literally were just quiet on slavery for a while because it was normal. But a, you know what stopped slavery? Churches. Churches were preaching against slavery. I spent, I devoted two and a half years and I mainly read on slavery in America. It was churches that started the fire that stopped slavery. Churches that were illegally teaching slaves how to read, how to write, um, letting them assemble for church, um, letting them marry. It was a beautiful thing what they had done because the Supreme Court backed it up. Now, where am I going with this? Right now, the Supreme Court is saying murder, murder of infant babies, of, of fetuses. Fetus simply, just simply means little person. That's what it means. Nowadays, people are like, well, it's three cells. No, it's a human being. And we need to be passionate about this. I'm not an activist. I'm a legislator. I've never stood outside of, of Fargo's abortion clinic. I should. I never have. I've never marched in a parade. But I am passionate about people murdering children. Period. Us as Christians need to get involved. When Jesus seen them destroying the temple and, and selling and doing all these horrible things in the tabernacle, he premeditated, made a whip. And the Bible said he went in there and it was the wrath of God. He overturned the money tables. 
it wasn't pleasant time. Jesus was not Mr. Rogers with a beard. Sometimes I think people think that yeah, Jesus, Jesus was not Mr. Rogers with a beard. He was a line. He was, he was a strong man that fought the system. You talk about a swamp. Oh, there was a swamp. Definitely there was a swamp in those days. Think about this. People say the world is getting so bad and I won't argue that. But Jesus came back in a time where Nero married a, four, what was it, I think a 14 year old boy, 13 year old boy. He dressed up like a girl, Nero did, and paraded themselves down the streets of Rome. We've been here. We've done this. Be strong. Be courageous. Bible says that we are we are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood called out from among them to be separate, saith the Lord. We are the barometer, the light to stand up in times like this. This isn't the time for churches to tuck and run and saying I'm gonna go get me some sun panels and hang out in the out in the countryside. There's no place to run. The battle is yours. You know, people say, well, you know, what? there's nothing we can do. That's not true. We have this beautiful little constitution I carry around with us all the time. And this thing is for the people, by the people. There is something you can do. There's absolutely something you can do. Stand up and fight. The Bible says for every idle word, we will give an account. There will be an account given. And we will give an account when God says, well, why did you let your great constitutional republic fall? Well, Lord, I just didn't feel like I could do anything. Really? Constitution is wrote in an eighth grade education in common English. You can understand it. We all can understand it. It's, it was wrote that perfectly. <clears throat> you will be given an account for what you did. Well, Lord, I went to the coffee shop and I sure complained. <coughs> well, Lord, I, I complained about federal politics. Federal politics is nothing when the fire is in your backyard. Grass roots. Your counties. Your cities. Your school boards. Your state legislature. That's where you make a difference. One mother stood up against... To her, she lost a child to drinking and driving. Before that, the cops, the sheriff would just drive you home. She said, no, we're not doing that no more. She started something called MAD, Mothers Against Mad, of Drunk Driving. <clears throat> Look what happened. One mother during the Tea Party movement, just having children, she didn't think she could do anything. She started something called the Tea Party on the internet. And it swept across the nation. You are powerful. You are strong. Be courageous. Get involved. There's never been a time where God's people need to stand up. Never been a time. More so than now. Our country needs you. You know, I'm a rancher. My grammar is horrible. I spell even worse. I... I am not a political person. I'm a rancher. I'm used to talking to cows. After a while, it just got to the point where when my wife told me I need to run, the Republican Party in my district asked me to run, I thought, no way am I going to do that. I asked the elders in my church. They said, give us a week or two. We'll think about it, pray about it, fast about it. Came back. They all said to go for it. I came back and told my wife. She said, well, what did they say? I said, they said to do it. She goes, what are you going to do? I said, I'm not doing that. She said, you'd defy the elders. I said, well, yeah, but they're wrong. Dad, my wife, she looked at me and she goes, what, what would you do if the Chinese were lining up on the Mexican border and our, our military was spent? I said, well, you know what I'd do. I'd get my brother and all my friends and neighbors, and I'd bring my son, and we'd pick up, take the pickup with all the ammunition that we have, and we'd have ourselves a war. And she said, so you mean to tell me you would die in a battle such as that, but you wouldn't 
go to the legislature once every two years. It's hard when you marry someone smarter than you are. <clears throat> she was right. Put up or shut up. Faith without works is dead. Stand up. Be a Christian. Do what's right. Speak out. These freedoms that we hold dear come from godly principles. Nowhere else. If they don't, if they don't have Christian values, look at their country. Prosperity. Freedom. Freedom comes from God's word. Anyways, I'm preaching now. <sighs> Love you all. Get involved. If you need help getting involved, you let me know. I will uh, sick my wife on you, and she'll tell you how to get involved. Get involved in your local party. Thank you. May the Lord guide and keep you. Until next time, happy trails.